Pass you this space already to, re to receive the word this morning. Am I yeah. excited? No, no, we, yeah. we, as a man, we should have a Bible. Yeah. You know, you'll be put in discipline, you know, with your Bible. Uh, no. <laughs> and your notepad, you, know, you, gotta, you, gotta, you, you, gotta, you, you need to have your own notepad. You know? and, but this morning, we're ready. This morning, we're ready. And let's give God a victory outreach welcome to Pastor John. <laughs> Hey, where's the mic? <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I, when I was hearing the testimonies, I was crying right there. Because um, it's an honor to be here with you. You may not understand this, but in my country, I was you. In my country, come here. In my country, when I was this guy's age, I was stabbing people, stealing cars, robbing houses. When the cops would catch me, they would say, no, oh, it can't be, it can't be. I've done that. Look at it. It looks too innocent. How many know you can put an innocent face and have a hard heart, an angry heart, a mad heart? And so, well, thank you. Give him a hand. So in us, when we're when we're growing up, we're the hopeless ones. Men. We're the ones that nobody thinks will make it. Our mom, she knows she's got trouble. Our dad, if we have a dad, knows he's got trouble. All the people in the neighborhood, they know whenever there's trouble, they go, he's the one. He's the one that did it because they know what we're like. Now, when somebody came to my neighborhood, I had a pistol, I had drugs, I was doing crime all the time. I had been in prison, I had been locked up, 12 years old, I was always locked up, always locked up. People would come to my house and shoot my house up, my mom and my sisters inside looking for me, to kill me. And finally, it led to where I went to prison for killing some people there in my neighborhood. So my life's over. There's no more life, there's no hope. But one day, when I was out of prison, some guys from the mint home, my heroes, you my heroes, because it takes a lot of heart to stay in the men's home. People don't know. Other people in churches and that, they don't know what you guys go through. They don't know what you deal with, what you hold down, what you experience, how much you humble yourself, how hard you thank God to help you to stay. Because there's a future. Even though you can't see it, you hear people telling you about it, they keep telling you about it, sounds like a lie. Sounds like they're lying to you. No way. That's good for him. That's good for him, not me. And in your heart, you don't, you don't have hope. But let me say this. When the heroes walked through my neighborhood, they said something very simple. They said, Jesus loves you. How many of you know that's Catholic? I've been to church. I've been baptized. I know the Bible. My mom took me. My grandma took me to church when I was a little boy. So I, I have a reverence for God. But I don't know that God loves me. I know I'm supposed to love Him. But I didn't love Him. I'm, I didn't love nobody. I didn't love women. I loved sex. I didn't love men. I like to fight them. I like to stick my knife in them. I like to shoot at them. I like to take their money. I like to sell them drugs. But when them men told me from the men's home, they said, Jesus loves you. I said, no way. I can't love you. I'm bad. I'm not good. I'm bad. He said, he has a plan for your future. I said, no. 
your life is hell. Mm -hmm. I, I go back to my crime and everything, but in my mind, I'm always thinking, what if? What if it's true? What if the little slightest possibility that they're telling me the truth, that he loves me, and that he wants a plan, he has a plan for my future. You know what? I need to find out. If I don't find out, it's going to bug me the rest of my life that I missed out. And if it's not true, if it's a big lie, I'll go back, get my gun, get my drugs, go back to stealing and robbing and going to prison and having sex with all the girls in the neighborhood and whatever. And I don't have to worry about God. I don't have to worry about being good. I don't have to worry about nothing. If it's a lie. And just like I was sitting there and the Holy Spirit was touching my heart and making me cry hearing your testimony. That's what He did to me in the home. He started touching my heart. All of a sudden, I was crying. I, was like, I don't want nobody to see. Because I'm a bad boy. I'm hard. I'm mean. I'm crazy. I'll hurt you. But all of a sudden, I'm crying. I'm crying. Don't let me cry. I don't want to cry. They're going to think I'm weak. They're going to think I'm a sissy. They're going to think I'm, no, you know, I'm easy to pick on or something. I don't want nobody to see me cry. And the Holy Spirit said, no, you're dirty inside. You're dirty. You did dirty things to people. It has to come out. Yes. You're hurting inside. People did do dirty. When you were a little boy, when you were growing up, when people did what they did to you, you know what people do to you when you're a child. Mm -hmm. said, all that anger is in you, and the Holy Spirit saying, "It's got to come out. It's got to come out. This is the way I'm going to take it out. You're going to weep at my altar." And then one day when I was there at the altar, the Lord said, because you come and wept and poured your heart out at my altar, I'm going to set you over a great congregation. Amen. So you're going to be a pastor. Once he told me, I kept it. The most precious thing I've ever had in my life. From God. He called me. Called me. Of course, you know the story. That was in 1987. It's 1988 now, right? <laughs> <laughs> 89, no, but a lot of years have gone by. A long time the Lord swap helped me. You know the brother? What is your name again? Ariel. Ariel. So we're going to write the book of Ariel. <laughs> huh? Because they're already the book of John in the Bible, right? <laughs> But no, each of us have a story like that. Yes. Each of us have our story. Because our story is different a little bit, you know? But our story is important. Your story is important. Your story is precious. When your story makes men weak, you have a precious story. You have an important story. Everybody's got to know about your story. Some of you guys got to make a movie of your story. Some of you got to write a book about your story. You should start your book now while you have time to write your book. Just write little bits by little bits by little bits as the Holy Spirit reminds you of what you've been through, all the terrible things you've survived. You should be dead. You shouldn't be here today. There's no way that you could be here if we were... The only way we could have got you here is by having a bunch of drugs, girls, and, and booze, Big party, you'll come. But for God, you wouldn't come. Sober? Your story has to be known to the world. You see that camera right there? That camera's taking part of your story. Only part of it. Yeah, it's going to go back to, uh, to our country, to our town. Colorado, the United States. And the people there, the people that are struggling to serve God, they're going to watch you guys worshiping God. Amen. And they're going to get challenged. They're going to go, why can't I worship God like them men? Amen. Amen. They're going to say, I want to be like you. Amen. They're going to see you with your, with your heart pouring out before the Lord. And they're going to go, I want to be like them men right there. You don't think you're the hero yet, huh? You don't know yet. You don't know your story yet. 
You don't know how important you are. I'm going to take you in the Bible. I'm going to take you to the book of John. And I want to talk to you today about the attitudes of man and how pompo we are, man. We're like, we're like, sometimes we just don't get it. You know, we think we're smart in some ways, but in some ways we're very, very, very dumb. What does that mean? That means that we don't, not that you're stupid. Remember this, it's not that you're stupid. It's just that you don't understand yet. But you catch on quick. You have that ability to catch on to everything that you're put into quick. Now in the book of John, I want to go into a chapter 13. Look at John chapter 13. And this is a story when Jesus is with all the guys. He's with the disciples. And he's about ready to celebrate the Passover meal. He's got the guys with him. And they're, you know, they're kicking back. They're relaxing. They're having something to eat. Uh, they're having something to eat. And all of a sudden he starts telling them things. And he's telling them things that they don't want to hear because they don't understand. And he says this. I'm not referring to you all. Let's go on to verse 18. Chapter 13, verse 18. He says, I'm not referring to you all. I know those who I've chosen. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. He who shares my bread has turned against me. Verse 19, I'm telling you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you'll believe that I am who I am. He says, very truly, I tell you, whoever accepts anyone I send, accepts me. Whoever, you know, welcomes, whoever I send, is welcoming me. And he goes on to say this, the one who sent me, you're also accepting God, the Father. And he goes on to say this, he says, After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in his spirit. And he testified, Verily, verily, I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. He told him, he said, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another. They go, who is it? Is it the young guy? Or is it the old guy? They go, or is it that guy that's always picking on me? Or is it that guy that thinks he's cute and all the girls like him? Who is it? Is it the one that's always laughing and making jokes? Or is it the one that's real serious? They started to get around. But you know what they were really thinking? They were thinking, is it me? Am I the weak one that's going to sell it? Because inside they know how they are. They know, I'm, they go, I know how I am. I know how when I get in a fight, I'm scared. My knees start shaking. And I have to get real crazy. Because I'm scared. You're not going to hurt me. I'm going to hurt you first. Or something to hit you with. I'm going to make sure that this blow really takes you out of the picture. Huh? I tell guys, you know why guys join gangs? Huh? Because they're scared. They're scared to be alone. Like, I want to be alone. I want to be alone. All you guys. Come on. All you guys. Let's go with me and go get this guy that I'm mad at. They're scared to go by themselves. You know why they put a gun? Yeah. And they're just going to protect me. You know why they put the knife in their pocket? Because they're scared. I need a knife because my hands ain't good enough. I need a knife, a gun, a dog, and all my gang. <laughs> that's how scared I am. <laughs> but inside we know we're like that. 
We know two things about us. I'm a coward and I'm a hero. Two things. When will I be the hero? Sometimes I will. Sometimes I'll be the coward. I'm the hero, but I have to fight this little guy. I'm the hero. Come on, boy. I gotta fight the big guy in the back. No, no, no. I gotta go. My mom's following me. <laughs> Look, the cops. <laughs> so I have both. I can be both, right? Yeah, it's yeah. up to me. I decide what, when, because I'm gonna survive. I'm gonna continue to live. I have an instinct to live. I'll jump out the window on the roof. I'll run through the traffic. I'll swim the lake, the river, the ocean. I'm going to get, I'll hide under a rock. I'll hide with the dog in his house. I'll get away. Because I'm going to have an instinct for survival. I met a man. He said, I want to kill myself. He had a knife. He said, I want to kill myself. I said, no, no, don't kill yourself. Give me the knife. Let me kill you. I want to kill my <laughs> Jesus was telling them, so the guy, there's a guy here, he just read the scripture to him. What did the scripture say? The one that shares my bread with me is going to betray me. Uh -huh. They're all sharing the bread with him. <laughs> right? Everybody's yeah. eating. They're having dinner. Uh, yes. So they're all going, it's me, huh? I know it's me. Then one of the guys, you know Peter. You read a lot about Peter. He's always a big mouth. Uh, yeah. So Peter goes like this. He goes, Psst, John. Hit him up. Find out who it is. Watch, listen. The disciples in verse 22, the, his disciples stared at one another at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, in verse 23, one of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, whom Jesus, who's that one? John. John. Well, it's his story and he's telling it. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Look at John. Look to the guy next to you and tell him, it's my story. It's my story. It's my story. I'm telling it. <laughs> See, when you have the option to tell the story, you can tell the good things about yourself. Right? If it's your story, you're telling it. Same thing, when you write your testimony, it's your story. Tell them just what you want. Don't tell them everything. You might go back to prison. No. <laughs> it's your story. You tell them what's necessary. Okay? And that's it. This is the book of John. John wrote this book. He said, you know who I am? I'm the one that Jesus loves. <laughs> See? You know what I tell everybody? I'm the one that Jesus loves. Amen. Amen. I am? Amen. You knew that, huh? Amen. <laughs> now you tell the guy next to you, no, I'm the one that Jesus loves. <laughs> <laughs> tell him. Tell him. Oh, you want my Lord, this is a men's event, right? Men's yeah. discipleship? Yeah. Are you afraid of anybody? Yeah. I'm not afraid, right? You afraid? You're not afraid of... He's like, you can't catch me. He's <laughs> lightning! <laughs> you, you can't be afraid to participate. Okay? You're free right now. Okay. All holds off. You can talk to the guy next to you. Talk to the guy next to you. Talk to him. Jesus loves. And then he says this, watch. He says, 
One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to him. He goes, Hey, hey, John, ask Jesus, who is this? Hallelujah. You know how come he wants to know? He wants to know is it me? Is it me? Leaning back against Jesus, John goes, Lord, who is it? <laughs> Come on, you can tell me. I'm the one you love, right? Yeah. And you know what he's saying in his heart? Am I the one? <laughs> Jesus answered. He said, It's the one whom I give this piece of bread when I dip it in the dish. Then he dipped the piece of bread in the dish. And he said, Of the 
Listen, what you doing? Let's fight. He said, I'm a pastor, I don't fight. He said, you're a Christian in the men's home, you don't fight. What? I want to talk to you. I talk to you. So you have problems, but you have a calling. Mm -hmm. We're going to help you get to your calling. Mm -hmm. He said, that's all we want to do. We just want to help you. We don't want to hurt you. We don't want to fight you. We don't want to cause you trouble. We want to teach you. Amen. So, Brett, <laughs> <laughs> no cookie. No. It's like, I don't know that. I never met people who want to help me. Everybody I meet, they want to show me how to steal. Oh, go with my cousin. She's, she's nasty. She's a bad girl. She likes you. Here, you don't have no bullets for your gun? I got bullets. Let's go pull the rod. Let's go beat these guys and take their drugs. Let's go do drugs. Let's go get high. Everybody I met taught me to do bad. Who are you guys? Who's me to the average guys? Who are you? Why do you care about me? I'm nobody. Why should you care about me? You want something from me. Money. The devil would come and tell me, right, they want to use you. Yeah. <laughs> they want to make you do the dishes. <laughs> That's why you're being nice. They want to do the dishes. <laughs> they want you to go clean the church. That's why you're being nice. You want me to clean the church, too. <laughs> They want you to go get a job and make some money. Give it to the church. Oh, they're going to pimp me. <laughs> I understand why they're being nice. Uh, now I get it. Come on, don't tell me you don't think it. <laughs> Gee, I did the dishes yesterday. How come I have to do them again today? <laughs> come on, somebody. <laughs> I cleaned the church last night. I stood late. Why do I got to get up in the morning for prayer? That's not right. I should sleep late. I don't want to have some eat This is one of the biggest parts of our life. Way down in our hearts, we go, I'm not really going to sleep. I'm only going to use him to like clean up on the foot. I didn't come here to say that. I'm only going to be here till I go to court. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just making a good impression on my parole officer. My wife is going to let me go home. Mm -hmm. She's going to think I'm a good guy. I'm just using this. Come on. Come on. I don't have no place else to go. This is the only place I have. Come on, preach it, bro. When my time comes, forget this big you to these guys, the bastard. Hallelujah. I'm going back to the drugs and the girls of the party. That was me and the whole that was me in the home. My wallet? I had drugs in my wallet. Mm -hmm. I have money in my wallet. I had a knife under my mattress. <laughs> And one day I went to a conference. They took me to a conference. I walked into the conference and I 
and says, whoa, all these guys are from prison. They're all gang members. They're all dead and good. The whole place, 10,000 people, and they're all criminals just like me. And then when I was sitting in that service, the Holy Spirit started touching my heart. I said, I knew it. I was crying at the altar, and I said, I'm no good at that. I'm no good. I'm not the one you want. I mess everything up. I lie, I cheat, I steal, I'm bad. Let me go. And he said, no, I love you. You can't love me. I don't love you. Let me tell you one of the biggest problems people have in life. The commandment says, love the Lord your God with all your heart. Who could do that? Can you do that? If you think you could do that, you're a big old liar, man. Because you'll be loving God. Oh, God, oh, God. And then the girl will go, na, 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 na. <laughs> <laughs> Get you, Jesus. <laughs> you go and my boss goes, Hey, if you don't go to church, I'll give you the manager position and I'll double your salary. <laughs> you go, Get off me, Jesus. Give me the check. <laughs> Your friends go, it's my wedding, have one beer, it's my birthday, have one smoke with me, it's my birthday, just a little bit of cocaine, a little bit of meth, a little bit of whatever, and you go, I like this guy more than Jesus, get off me, come on, friend. I don't know about you, I went to prison for my friend. So I love my friend. Thought said, who did it? You're gonna go to prison. Let's go. And I love my friend. And Jesus reminds me, he goes, hey John, yeah. Didn't you want to do what I tell you? So you went to prison for your friend. So I loved him. He said, you know, when you were in prison, he was teaming on your old lady. He said, oh, your old man ain't around now. That's what you remember, huh? I don't regret it. Guilty as charged. Here's my point. When you're trying to love God, you can't love God like God loves you. That's right. The love God has for you is so different from your love for Him. Amen. The love you have for God, can I tell you? Let me get your attention. Of course. The love you have for God, well, what can I get out of you, God? The love you have for God goes like this. Give me a job. Give me a wife. Give me a car. A motorcycle. A trike. A donkey. I don't know. Give me a job. Give me some money. Give me a house. Apartment. Food. You know when something changes in you? When you go like this, it changes and you go. What can I do for you? Yes. Your prayer is, Give him the wife. Give him a family. Give him a job. That's your prayer. No more you. All of a sudden you change. Your, your, your heart changes. You're like, what? Give him a future. Well, give him a bondage. Break his bondage of his addictions. And you start going, your list, your list is all the people you know, and it keeps going, it even goes to us. You said, give them some help, them old guys that came from Colorado. Hallelujah. You know, give them, a, give them some rest, give them a help, send them leaders to work with them. Send them young men, strong young men that will help them and, and go with them when they travel around the world. Send them soldiers. Send them people that will serve them. Send them people that will raise up and take their spot when God takes them home. Your prayers change. I'll send you're not the one more. Give me, give me, give me. You're going, 
help him, 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 help him. And all of a sudden, that power of God's flowing through you, and everything you need just happened. He called. Amen. You know, I got this. Some young man came up to me and said, Pastor, you're here. Hey, that's nice. I didn't use it. <laughs> what is this thing? This money. You know where I get my money? People give it. When I say, I'm going to go to the Philippines, go check out the guys over there. The people say, hey, Pastor, here. Hey, Pastor, here. Hey, Pastor, here. I heard a knock at the night. In the night? Welcome to the door. It's my daughter. Dad, it's not much. A hundred dollars to help you to your church. Amen. Thank you, baby. What? If they can't? Do you think she couldn't have spent that hundred dollars on her children? Mm -hmm. To buy them milk and cereal and what have you? She said, no, Dad, you need to go check on the guys over there. Mm -hmm. Those are our guys. Those are our guys. Yeah, yeah. Those are victory outreach guys over there. Go we'll see Amen. how they're doing. Go check. Amen. And then come back and tell us. And take a lot of pictures. Mm -hmm. So we can see them. So we can know who they are. <laughs> you know, as lonely as you feel here, that's how lonely you feel. I don't think so. We're over there and we're doing the work of the Lord. And we're does anybody care? Does anybody even know we're here? You guys get up in the morning and you remember our names. And you just say, hey God, remember them two old guys? Strength of women. Because our family is just going to remember them. There's something here when Jesus, and I'm going to close because I'm going to, you guys will probably I'm hungry. You probably want some bread. I've been eating all the bread. <laughs> <laughs> in the book of Galatians, chapter 2, 20, it says this in verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. If God's given Himself for me, uh, what do I do for Him? If you were my friend, if you were my friend, and we were in the streets, and we were doing crime, and somebody tried to pick on you, I'll defend you. You can pick on him, you have to pick on me. If I was, if we were in the streets and we were hanging out in that, and I had something to eat, I would say, here, with me. If I have a bike, I say, get on, let's go. I would say, no, you stay here, I'm going by myself. Right? You do that, right? Right? right. You're used to that. And then Jesus says, what about me? What, I'm no good? You just kick me away? I can't be at least like your friend. I can't treat it your friend. You can't treat me. I can't go with you. And he says, I know that part of you. I know that part of you that rejects me. He says, because I made that. I put you like that. Now, you have to want to change that. Will it ever change? I don't know. Totally? 100%? I don't know. Maybe when you die. You got a knife? Maybe we can take care of that. some of that now today. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't expect to be perfect. I don't think I'm going to be perfect. I think I'm going to be John. I think I'm going to be Pastor John. I'm going to take up that pastor. John. And I think I'm going to be like that till I get old and done. Change. My heart will change. My heart will say, I want that guy to thank you. See, before when I was not pastor John, when I was dirty old me, I'd be like, what is the guy? I'll take his shoes. You get his pants, I'll get his shoes. 
Right? All of a sudden, when you're changing, you're like, does that guy have some shoes? You don't have any shoes. Did you give him your shoes? There you go. Oh, man, I don't want to, but okay, here. And then I go, here, bro. If you give him your shoes, I'll give you my boots. Oh, oh, All right now. <laughs> when you come to America, I'll give you the other one. <laughs> In the closing there, in the book of John, Jesus said this, he says, I give you a new command. You want to know the new command? Don't eat bread. No. You know what he said? Love one another. Now, I was just getting used to trying to love him. I was going like, I'm trying to love you, I'm trying to love you, I'm trying to love you. Oh, I messed up again, but I'm trying to love you, and I'm trying to love you. Oh, I messed up again. And then he goes, here, love them now. I ain't making it harder. Right? Because that, you, I can't see you. Him, I can see right in his eyes. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> It's <laughs> not yeah. I have things in me. I have anger. I have love. I have jealousy. I have Seven things days. in me. What if he sees them things in me? What if he gets to know me? What if he knows my secrets? That's why God says confess to one another. And so he says, sit down with that guy, have a cup of coffee. He's going to tell me, oh, when I was little, my dad used to hit me. I had a wife, and my friend took her. And now I'm alone. My kids don't like me no more. Because I went to prison, and I, they were little, and their mother said I was no good, no good, leave me alone. And they start sharing their heart, they start saying, look, this is my thing. And when you see their pain, you go, I don't want to hurt the guy no more. I don't want to make it worse for him. I don't want his life more hard. It's already hard. What if I can help him? What if I can say, hey, when you have trouble, help me. If you have a hard time in the home, come and tell me, bro. You can talk, you can tell that. That's how you use the thumb, bro. When you get through this hump, I'm going to tell you something. Your eyes are going to change where you can see the future now. In you, there's a dream. The dream's in here, the devil gets it, and you can never do that. Never, never in your life. Nothing can go that way. Never. And God says, with me, all things are possible. With me, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. If one could send a thousand in the flight, two could send ten thousand in the flight. Well, then what can all of you do? You guys all will march through these streets, and you put your chest up, and you tell people, we're so extramo, man. Oh, God, yeah, look, 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 look. I ain't got no guns and weapons. I ain't gonna steal from your store. I come to tell you about Jesus, that He loves you and He has a plan for your life. Amen. And they think, you think it's over there? You just begun. Man, now they're at home at night. And they're going, what were they talking about? <laughs> and you know what they do? They pray. They go, God, is it true? You love me? I'm pretty soon here you come again. And they go, hey, I need to talk to you. Explain to me, what were you saying over there? God loves you, He has a plan for you. Well, what do I do? You go, come here, put your hand right here. Let me pray for you. <laughs> say, let me have a Bible study at your house. Let us come down to your house and have a Bible study. Or you come to our church. Or you come in the man's home. And the guy said, I'm scared to go in there. I see all them crazy criminals you have there. You go, I'll take care of you. If you come, I will personally take care of you. And then every day when you wake up and you want to run, 
you go to town hall, I told that guy I was going to take care of him. i got to stay now. <laughs> That's just love, right? It's not feeling. It's not a feeling. That's right. Like my wife, she's been with me 35 years, and now she tells me some days, could you just stay away from me? <laughs> she says, I can't stand you today. You're getting on my nerves today. <laughs> See, I'm a little sad. <laughs> But I already know from experience, I don't, she's not telling me I reject you forever. She's saying for today, give me a break. <laughs> you know, just up a little, give me some room. <laughs> she loves me, she just don't like me that day. Amen. And you guys will be like that with each other some days. You just go, get off my bed. Don't step on my pillow when you're going up. Don't use the bathroom and dry your hands on my towel. <laughs> Huh? Hey, where's my socks? Oh, you don't wear socks. You wear socks? Socks are? Socks are? What am I saying? I'm saying, you're like me. Amen. I was you. I was you. I was you. I was in the home. I was going, what the heck am I doing here? Why is everybody bossing me around? Why do I gotta do this, God? What is it? What you gonna do? What's up? And then one day I was the staff. Who's the staff? Let me see the staff. Cup. Oh, leaders. Leaders. And then everybody said, I don't like you no more. You tell me what to do. And then they said, You wanna be the director? And God said, No, you can't be the director. You don't know how. You have to be the pastor. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't be the director, why? What's the you do? I'm too nice. I have to be strong enough to be a director. I went through that phase Come on. too fast. Mm -hmm. had a guy to be the director. He took me to be the pastor. He has a plan for you. Mm -hmm. you got to stay there long enough to find out. Mm -hmm. So I came in 1987, 1988, okay. What is the year? It's like I don't even care no more. Do you know what a lifer is? You know what a lifer is. Yeah, good. You just go, I never get out. I'm a lifer. I'm a lifer. That's my heart. When I told Jesus, I said, I was going to do life for the government, for murder, but now I'll do life for you. And he said, let's do it. Let's go. Where are you at? Are you saying, I'll do six months for you, Jesus? Because I'm just a misdemeanor. I'll do a year for you, Jesus, because I'm a, a heavy misdemeanor. I'll do five years. I'm a felony. Huh? He said, I'm looking for lifers. I'm looking for people that go, I'm a lifer. And you know what? There's women looking for lifers. There's women, they're, they're like, oh God, I want a lifer. I want a man that's going to serve you his whole life. I don't want a six-month wonder. I don't want a 90-day boy. I don't want some you know, misdemeanor. I want a man of God. Yes. And they're praying, they're crying for, for God to raise him up. And you're that guy. It does time to do work. If I put the bread in the oven... And it starts to cook, and then I take it out, and it's puro masa. Who wants it? Who wants a masa boy? Ah, nasty, yeah. And Jesus says that too. He says, your masa? Make me sick. But I still love you. How many times? Seven. Seven times, seven, seven. seven. He never gives up on you. Not gonna give up on it. I want you to stand up. <coughs> I want you to do something. I want you to pray for me and Pastor Steve. Can you do that? Yeah. Yes. 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 You guys would just do that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Man. Yes. Man. Yes. Yes. Dr. John, Dr. Albert, we have Steve. We have Steve. 
We have big dreams. We need men to help us. You know what? We pray to God and we go send this men. You know what? God was looking in the streets and he found Jesus. And he heard a strong man. When Pastor Sonny and his wife are praying and they're going, God, we're getting old. Can you send us some men? Can you send us some strong men? Young men? And God's saying, here's one. Here's one. I found one here. I found one here. I found one here. He's searching all around the world. And here's the guy saying, We know that. You know why we know that? We don't know. One day we were in the river. One day we were saying, one day it's crazy. And now we believe it more. I'm going to ask you guys, come on up. Come on up. Come on up. You know the guys in the home probably pay for it more than anybody in Christianity, right? Amen. You know that you guys got anointing on you? Amen. God's all over you. Yeah. He's on you so strong. The world's waiting for you to bring this anointing to them. 